Hello guys and welcome to another week full of 3D content. Today, um, a couple of special announcements we could, before we jump into the main topic of, of today's video, which is render, by the way. Uh, first of all, we just released uh, our newest course, which is our complete character creation, or I think it's called uh, Blender Character Creation for Absolute Beginners. It's a 22-hour course. It's one of my like longest courses so far, where I teach you all of the pipeline that you will need to create a stylized character inside of Blender. It's an excellent way to start your 3D journey. If you've been watching our videos and you want to jump into the 3D world and don't know where to start, I assure you this is going to be a great one. The first couple of hours, we actually go through the very basics of 3D, and then we jump onto the main things, which is the, the whole character with the sculpting, texturing, UVs, even posing. So... Um, it's a lot of very useful content, and if you're already a um, like um, a proficient 3D artist, if you already have some experience and you want to learn a little bit more about Blender, I strongly recommend this one because I was answering a comment uh, yesterday, and uh, I think from now on I'm probably gonna be doing my retopology inside of Blender because it's just so fast, like so much faster than uh, in Maya using a couple of little tricks that we've talked about before here in the channel. But uh, if you want to learn about those, make sure to check uh, our Skillshare link, which is this one right here. Hey guys, Abraham here. I just wanted to remind you guys that we upload all of our courses to Skillshare. Skillshare is this amazing site where you can access a ton of different content to learn, improve, and grow as an artist. We have all of our courses available to watch and learn from right now in Skillshare. You can check the description down here. And Skillshare is offering one free month trial to their premium membership. With this membership, you're going to be able to access all of our courses and watch and learn all of the amazing things that we cover with all of the softwares. So what are you waiting for? Check Skillshare down here below. So there you go. Now, uh, we also have the course in other sites. If you like using Udemy or of the other ones, make sure to check the links down here in the description and, uh, and you're good to go. Now, um, before we start this video, guys, I need to make a confession. I'm really angry in a fun, you know, joking kind of way, but at the same time, kind of serious kind of way. I'm really angry because... Um, we had the portfolio review this weekend. You can check the videos here in the, on the sidebar over there. And the, on the portfolio review, which was really good, we had like almost 30 people submitting their stuff. There were, I would say like one of the most glaring issues that I saw was a rendering. Like people, guys, you need to present your stuff in the best possible way. And there's no excuse. Rendering right now in our time, of, like in this age of technology, is super, super easy. So there's no excuse in presenting a screenshot from Maya or from Seabrush. There's no excuse in presenting a really bad render. Like you need to present your stuff in the best possible way. And today we're going to be covering just that. Let me just jump. There we go. I have, I'm standing up as you can see, and my screen, my other screen is down here. So I need to look up at where the stuff are. So, um, Especially if you're going to be a 3D a modeler. Modelers are, I would say, like the like the core of, of the whole team, right? Because they need to create the assets that we're going to be using in production for animation, rendering, whatever. So if you're going to be modeling and you want to make sure that people know that you're an amazing 3D artist, again, you need to present your stuff in the best possible way. And as I've mentioned earlier, there's no excuse. Uh, we have Blender. Blender is a completely free software. And believe me, this is not because I'm doing a promotion because of the of the new course. It's just some, sometimes I've asked my students, like, why aren't you getting a cool render of your ZBrush stuff? Or why aren't you getting a cool render from your, I don't know, even some sort of like, uh, like Google SketchUp? I don't care where you're modeling. And most of the time, the answer is, I find Arnold really complicated. I don't understand Arnold. We also have a class of that, uh, uh, by the way, with the cinematic class. Uh, but the the three point light setup, and not even that, like the one light setup, should be something that everyone should know. So today I'm going to show it to you right here inside of Blender. Super super easy. So I'm going to open a um, a file that we that I was working on with the um, where is it on the course which is the sculpting barrel, barrel sculpt, there we go. So this is a sculpt, like this could be your model coming from ZBrush, if you're using Forger, if you're using uh, ZBrush Core, I don't care. This could be a very simple model that you did or sculpted in another software, and here you have this, like here's where you can uh, be working with. The first thing we need to do when uh, creating a good like light setup 
is finding our camera, right? And uh, nowadays, a square composition is actually like sometimes preferred for web, especially for like ArtStation and for uh, like Instagram, TikTok, even Facebook, stuff like that. The square composition is really good because it just lets you focus on the object. Uh, you still need to know about like the, the uh, um, rectangular composition, of course, but here inside of, of Blender, the only thing we need to do, first of all, we're gonna be rendering with cycles, the like the, the good uh, rendering. I'm not saying that Eve's not a good render, but I just mean the cycles is gonna give you a like good ray traced effect. Um, and we're gonna go here to the options, and as you can see, I'm running at 1024 by 1024. I'm gonna jump into my camera right here, and uh, I do like having this option on navigation. So if you go to your navigation, you can select this thing on the view options, camera to view. Once we do this, uh, if you move inside your camera, the camera that you're like uh, like piloting will go with you. So let's find an area. This is the first thing that I want you to see because uh, this was a mistake a lot of people made in their portfolios. When you're doing a render for a product, you want to show the product. So don't be scared to really push in into your product and see the whole thing. Like we have a very big square. Oh my God. Oh. Oh. We have a very big square. So we need to make sure that we're using most of that square. I've had students send me renders like this of their stuff. It's like, why? Like you spend so much time working on this model. Why are you not showing me every single detail? And sometimes they're like, oh, that's because like some details are not as good. I don't care. Just give me a little bit of a better look so that I can appreciate. It. And I will be the judge. We've talked about this before. You should never talk bad about your own models. You let people be the judges of your models. So if you think that there's something missing, don't tell the people, let them figure it out. Of course, if it's very glaring, you need to fix it. But if there's like very subtle things, you don't need to worry as much. Let them see because sometimes they won't even see it and they will just like your artwork and that's it. So there we go. This is this would be like my, my view right here. I'm going to go a little bit into the sort of like perspective view so that we can see a little bit of the top. And as you can see, I am leaving a little bit of area on the outsides of the of this uh, uh, piece of this object so that we can let it breathe. Because another very common mistake is people will do things like this. Like they will go really, really close. It's like, whoa, okay, just back up. Just imagine where you would see this object like at a distance. If you're going to buy it, like what would be the angle that you're going to be seeing it, right? So something like this works fine. We can even like fine tune it with this little uh, magnifying glass over here. So there we go. That's the... I would say that this will be my, or, or I like this uh, main position. Let me go real quick to get rid of my allergies. Uh, it's allergy season over here and uh, I suffer quite a bit from allergies. Fortunately, it's only like, uh, you know, sneezes and stuff, but it's uh, really, really annoying, especially when I'm recording. So we have enough room for the element. Perfect. Background. Background is really important. It's one of those things that, again, a lot of people miss. There's two options that you have for background. That's why I pulled this image right here because I really like this image right here. You have two options for your background, perfectly white, perfectly black, or middle gray. Those are the ones that I would recommend for the presentation of a product, unless you want to like model and sculpt and prepare your object in a better way. Of course, it's really good if you can manage to like incorporate your object where it's going to be, such as this kind of renders, right? Like you can do a little bit of uh, photo uh, bashing or photo manipulation, and that's perfectly fine. But again, usually for product placements, something like this, more than enough. That's all you need. Now, in this case, you can see that the floor is a little bit glossy. I'll show you how to do it glossy, how to do it like mad, how to do it every single option. So uh, let's go into our main camera right here. There's two types of, of ground, the, the grounds that I like to use for my compositions. The first of them I've used several times is the typical like soft uh, back plate. The advantage of that one is you get like a very soft solution. You don't get uh, as many shadows and very importantly, there's going to be a lot of light going or coming from the sides. If you want to keep things a little bit more contrasty, which is what I'm about to do right now, you can this you can use this method. I'm going to create mesh, a cube, and then we're going to select three faces of the cube. This guy's right here. We're going to delete the faces. We're going to be left with this thing right here. We're going to go into edges. We're going to select this edges right here. We're going to bevel them. Oh, bevel them a little bit, something like that. Let's give it a couple of divisions. There we go. Right click and shade smooth on uh, object mode. There we go. Let's scale this up. I would recommend this be like a relatively big room. Imagine this is like a room, like a photo studio. I'm going to go to number one, go into wireframe mode. This scene is a little bit heavy because the barrel is not decimated or anything, which shows you that again, even if you're doing this with a Seaver sculpture, 
nothing bad. You can just bring the whole sculpture in from ZBrush and, and there you go. You're ready to, to create a nice render. So that's it. Um, if you want to be like super, super precise, I would recommend like making sure that the corner of the plane is aligned to the corner of the camera so that we have this like walls on the back and we don't see any of the background. That's it. Let's delete this light. I'm just gonna just delete it. And uh, right now, if we were to render this, it's gonna be like a really bad render because we have absolutely no lights. So again, I'm just gonna show you. If you're gonna do the bare minimum for your renders, do this. Two lights. I just need two lights from you guys. Again, if you wanna go more hardcore and you wanna learn a little bit more about lights, we have the course, the cinematic lightning course. I go over a lot of different styles for rendering, which you can follow there. But if you're just gonna do use two lights, we know the trick. We're gonna go to HDR Haven, well, now Polyhaven and just pick whichever you want from this my advice is try to use a soft light okay give me just one second i don't know why my dogs are barking so loud right now so uh, they now have a patreon by the way so if you subscribe to the patreon and you uh, like support the site you'll get early access as you can see to this sort of stuff my advice for uh product rendering try to grab images that are uh, balance in color like you don't want this sort of stuff because as you can see it's a little bit green it's a little bit yellow so that's gonna like impregnate your your scene it's gonna make it a little bit uh like the color balance is gonna shift a little bit so i would go for neutral color balances and usually i like to go for soft shadows so something like this like solid to the interior this one's perfect it's very wide you can see the little spheres right here very soft shadow that way if i want to add a, a little bit more of a dramatic light i can do it and control it myself inside of the of the software so let's download this real quick and uh, super easy. We're just going to go uh, to Blender and here on the render um, on this, on the world options, we're going to go to color and you're going to select environment texture and then you're going to link the texture that you just downloaded. So let me real quick go here. Where is it? Do, 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 do. Date modify. What's the name of this thing? Solitude Interior. Uh, 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 let me just load it real quick off camera. Where is it? Oh, there we go. I had to refresh. Cool. So now the image is loaded right there. You will not see it right here, but if we jump into rendering mode, which is this last one right here, you're going to see how we have it now. There we go. Now, uh, by default, this thing will be like, again, injecting light into the scene. And as you can see, this is already giving us a really good one. And this is what a lot of people stop. The reason why I don't like this, and I've mentioned this a lot in the, in the portfolio reviews, there's not enough contrast. It looks very flat. It's just like white overall, like everywhere. Uh, there's no like specific shadow. And we don't even have textures for this thing, by the way, for the barrel. So, so you're going to see how just a very simple light will create a better result. So what do I do? I like to go here into the world and on the strength, you can lower this to something like a 0.3, for instance. It's going to make it a lot darker, not super dark, but just a little bit darker, maybe even lower. Let's say like a 0.2. There we go. That looks a little bit better. Now that we have this, I'm going to go back to like a basic mode here or a shaded mode. I'm going to press shift A and I'm going to add a very basic light just over here lights. And I'm going to add an area light, the area lights inside of Blender, inside of B-Ray, inside of uh, Arnold, inside of a lot of the softwares nowadays, they work pretty much the same. Like you're going to have your, your shape and you can change uh, the intensity of the light. You can change the color of the light. You can change things like that. So in, in here, for instance, inside of Blender, I'm just going to bring this up like right about there. And then I'm going to bring it to one of the sides of the camera like this. You can use this point to point it towards an object, as you can see right there, which is very handy, to be honest. Okay, move. Let's grab the light, move it over here. I'm going to move this thing. There we go. Something like that. Okay. So that we have a nice shadow going towards the back. Now on the light options, again, as I mentioned, there's a couple of things like the size of the object. I'm going to explain why that's important in just a second. Um, and the power. So if we were to render right now, you're going to see pretty much nothing happens. It's exactly the same, but if we increase the power to, let's say a hundredth, now we see a little bit of a light. And if we increase this to like a thousand, it's going to be way, 
way, way, way more light. We don't need a thousand watts. We need something like, I would say 500 watts. So as you can see, we get this very nice and interesting shadow here, shadow here. And again, we get a nice like little detail, right? This is the three point light setup, which is just your key light hitting the object in a very nice direct way, usually either on the right or on the left, which is, by the way, that's exactly the, the studio like setup that I have right here. Uh, I have a key light right here, which is giving me my main illumination. There's another one right here that's uh, like illuminating this part of my face. And I'm going to explain another one that I have right there. You might not be able to see it right now. Let me see if I can show it to you. There we go. That's my little reflector right there on top of my pile of uh, paintings and stuff. So uh, that's again, that's the that's the, the setup that I have right here. I have like two main lights hitting me right here on, on my face uh, to make sure that I'm like well lit. OK, so uh, now that we have that, one of the things that I'm going to do is I'm going to change the size because as you can see the size right now is 1.57. So it's a really big panel of light shooting 500 watts of energy into my scene. If I decrease the size of this, but keep the same amount of uh, power, look at what's going to happen. Let's go to 0.25. So it's like a really, really little square of light with the same amount of intensity. What happens? The shadows, right? The shadows are going to be way, way darker. Way, well, not darker, but like sharper. We're going to have a, a sharper shadow because our light source is smaller. So the smaller your light source, or the more powerful it is also like the sun, it's really big, right? But so far away that it pretty much works as a, as a, um, a flashlight. So it's just like one single point of light that's going through space and it hits us with like pretty much parallel rays, okay? So this is what we have right here, like a really powerful light that's focusing all of the energy into a single point. And that gives us, as you can see, a, a more like defined uh, sh uh, shape right here. We can go like 0.01 for instance, like super, super small. And you're gonna see how this looks super fake, of course, because it's it's just not, not realistic. So I'm gonna go again on the size to something like 0.25, so 25 centimeters. And you can see we get a very nice soft uh, effect right here. Now we can play with the inten intensity and say, hey, maybe we want this to be a little bit less exposed. So let's try something like 400 watts or maybe even like 300 watts. There we go. Like the colors are a little bit more balanced. And also one of the reasons why I'm doing this is because I know I can punch the colors la like later on in post-production a little bit more or a little bit less, depending if I want. But if you're already really exposed, it's very difficult to manage. So again, the balance image might be good. I think this is a little bit too low, so I'm going to go 350. And one thing I like to do is I like to change the temperature of the lights. Unfortunately, we don't have a temperature slider uh, by default here inside of Blender. I'm sure there's a plugin out there to do that. Uh, but I'm just going to grab like the sort of like warmish as you can see i'm going towards the reds warmish like tone to the whole thing and this already again gives me a, a better effect you can make this more contrasty by going into your uh light your hdri light and you can say 0.1 for instance like bring this lower or even lower like 0 0.05 and what's going to happen is there's going to be less and less like global illumination, if you wish. And we're going to have more and more direct illumination. And that's going to make our things look a little bit more contrasty. I would advise a bit against going to the one, because again, this is going to make things look a little bit too flat. But something like a 0.1, I think, looks good. A little bit too dark. So let's try 0 0.2. This one I like a little bit more. So that's, again, if you're just going to give me two lights on your next portfolio review, this, this is all I need, okay? Just give me a very nice HDRI, a very nice key light pointing towards your object, and you're gonna have a nice clean render. Of course, when I render this, I'm gonna get denoiser, but I can actually activate it here on the uh, viewport denoiser. There we go. So this would be my clean image. And we don't have textures. This is just like a basic material that I added to this, uh, to this barrel. So as you can see, we get a very nice result. Like not a lot of time has been invested in this and we already have a nice result. But if you want to do just one more light for me, just one more light for me and for you, for your portfolio, give me, just give me one rim light. And the rim light is the light that's going to be coming from the side. I'm going to press Shift A, lights. In this case, I'm going to use a spotlight because the spotlight has a cone. So I'm going to be able to, to better um, like position it. I'm going to go like up here. We're also going to point it towards the barrel. There we go. And if we go to the lights, we have uh, the radius, which is the the size of the light in this case. So again, this has to do with, um, with the sharpness of the elements. And again, let's try like 500 watts to start with. One very cool thing that I suggest is uh, go to rendering, like turn on your rendering to see how things are like working. And then the first light that you submitted or that you were using, just turn it off so that you can see what the other light is doing first. 
And that way, as you can see, I can I can start tweaking the intensity here. Let's try like a thousand, a little bit better. I think the direction is not exactly where I want it. No, it is. It is. It's just the intensity because it's a smaller light, right? So um, let's grab the light. I'm going to go back to here. A G. Let's move this like this. There we go. The rim light usually comes at one of the sides of the, of the element like that. So now if we render, we should see like the side of the barrel. There we go. Being illuminated by this light. And again, you can increase it. Like no one's telling you not to use like a 2000 watt uh, like lamp. I'm going to change this to a, like a light blue. Just to get that a little bit of a different effect. There we go. And now we can turn on the other light uh, again. And look at this. Nicer, right? Simple stuff. Just three lights. One global light. One key light. One rim light. And we have a clean render. This is the bare minimum, like the super bare minimum that you should have on your portfolios when presenting your work. As you can see, it only took me 20 minutes and it, that was because I was explaining. I can probably do this in like five minutes. Uh, it only will only take you five to 10 minutes to set up this light. And one thing you can do is just save this file. Like no one's stopping you from just saving this file and reusing it for every single object that you want. Is it boring? A little bit because it's like the most traditional one uh, that you can do. Now I did promise that I was going to show you how to do glossy uh, like uh, things. It's just the material. So if I go into the cube right here and I go to the materials, I'm just going to add a new material. And if I uh, decrease in this case the roughness, as you're about to see, we're going to get a like a like a more interesting effect over here. So let's go like 0.1 roughness. And what I'm going to do is I'm also going to change the base color because it, it tends to be like really really white. As you can see, we're going to get some reflections here, and you can see some reflections down there. You want black? Let's go black. There we go. Black, uh, again, black floor. Now, if you don't want to see that corner right there, we can always go over here. Just rotate this so that we don't see the corner. And if we go back to the camera, the corner is going to be hidden on this side. And you can see the reflection of your barrel like down here. We might need to move the camera a little bit so you can see it. And again, just play around with the roughness. Maybe you want a little bit more, like, let's say, 0.25, so you barely see it. If you want this into more of a of a pearl sort of look, we can go for something like this. Oh, that was a specific color. There we go. So you can play around with colors. Colors are great, and they can help uh, your overall like thing. It will make it look better. We do have ray tracing going on, so what's going to happen is a uh, rays are going to be bouncing everywhere. And you're going to see the color reflected in other parts of the of the object. But again, this render looks miles miles better than just the simple like screenshot like imagine that i just took a screenshot like this no or like this with ev no right like this is what you want this is the sort of render that we're going for a professional looking render that's going to give your portfolio a more professional look and hopefully uh, more views more uh, contact points more uh, exposure so that's it, guys. I'm going to stop the video right here. Thank you very much for um, like listening to all of my rants here. But hopefully all of this information is useful for you and your renders are looking better and better. If you're uh, wondering how to do this for Maya, I've already done a video. It was done, I believe, like November like, last year. If you go looking into our videos, uh, there's one like clay render and wireframe render techniques. It was like, like a vampire bust. So check it out. It's very similar concepts, very similar uh, techniques that you can use for your uh, renders inside of Maya as well. And don't forget to leave us a comment, like, like, share, all of that stuff helps the channel. Um, we're approaching the end of the month. Remember that we are going to be uh, like uh, giving away free courses for uh, the fan of the month and the email list of the month. So make sure you join both of those uh, groups by commenting and by joining our mailing list. And I think that's pretty much it. Tomorrow, we're probably going to be working on the female phase that I promised as well. So hang on tight and I'll see you back on the next one. Bye bye.